Okay, so now we have Jose Ortiz, who comes from us from the University of Puerto Rico, and he is a computer science professor there. Um, and for the last several years, he's been running the um, high performance computing facility there. So enjoy his presentation. Hi, uh, I will be presenting TOA, which is a joint work with Humberto Ortiz and some of the graduate students. Eric Santos, Albert Maldonado, and Jensen Grullón. Eric Santos is in the audience. So this will be the outline of my presentation. I will give you a really brief background. I will talk you, to you about the TOA backend, uh, the graphic user interface, and some plugins that we have connected to the graphic user interface. So with this slide, I just want to acknowledge that there are several, many other uh, visualization, visualization systems and visualization applications based on NetFlows. Uh, most of them have been presented in previous Flowcons. Uh, Rayon and Prince are being presented everywhere in, in, in this year's Flowcon. Uh, So I want to highlight the features of TOA. Uh, it was in, its web implementation is based in Bootstrap, so it fits nicely with tablets and um, smartphones. Uh, the graphs are interactive, so they can listen to events that are used to connect the graphic user interface to the plugins. Uh, it allows, allows us to query all the sensor data that is stored in the database. We have uh, some parallel implementations of the parser and the grapher generator. Uh, and all the parsing is done in one pass over the data files. So I took this uh, generic data representation process from a poster from last year. Uh, you normally have some sensors that you want to generate graph for them, and for each of them, you take the raw data with the flow content, you filter the data, then you render the visualization, and finally you visualize. In TOA, we take the raw data from the collector, we filter all the data guided by the database configuration of the sensors, and that's done by the parser, then for each of the sensor, we render the visualization and we finally visualize in the web interface. So this is a, an overview of how TOA works. It has a MySQL database for the configurations. We have a regular NetFlow collector and we use the cron service to call the parser and the grapher, which are just simply two Python scripts. So the data dictionary is a data structure that is generated using the configuration that is stored in the database. And it is the heart of TOA because it is used to know what, parts, what data needs to be parsed. It is used by the grapher to know what graph we have to generate, and then it is used in the graphic user interface to generate the menus. Uh, with the parser, it reads all the NetFlow data that is collected. Then you have to really easy configure uh, a network or a net label, or as we call in the graphic user interface, a device, which is simply you want to monitor something by a uh, autonomous system number, or by the collector, sorry, exporter interface, or by a net uh, block of network, a network block, sorry, or just an IP. You just want to configure that you want to that you want to parse that data for some kind of network once you have that configured you can uh, the parser will start generating input and output uh, traffic uh, packets and flows and then you can also say uh, for each of this uh, of the networks you can monitor different ports and also you can monitor the connection between the networks that you configure in the, in the, in the system. 
Then the grapher runs instantly after the parser. It generates static graphs uh, to, to be watching the graphic user interface. But then if you want to generate uh, dynamic graphs, you, ne you need to log in into the system. And the graphs are based in, uh, in the Google Charts library, again, because they are in JavaScript and they can respond to events. There are no more than 300 points per timeline graph. So when we want to monitor, we want, when we want to generate graph for week, monthly, and yearly information, we do some average, averaging like in RRD tools. And finally, we have the graphic user interface. This is how it looks. This is the home. The first uh, graph that you see are the network that are configured and, and the interconnection that you want to monitor. If you choose one of them, it will give you a, a, a summary of the connections and how many packets, flows, and, and flow records, and traffic is passing between the connections. And then you, you can click on the devices, and then you can browse over all the graphs that are generated by the grapher. <clears throat> so for example, this is a graph for Octes for one of our networks, the Rio Piedras campus. You can monitor packets, flows, and a graph with a combination of the, of the information. You can, as I said before, you have a network as it is the RP campus, and you can say that you want to monitor port 22. And for each port that you configure, you will have also graph for octet packets, flows, and a combination. And in this other example that you can see the traffic that is between one of the network, which we named RP, and another network that we, which we named uh, room. Once you are logged in into a system, you can generate the custom queries that is to create graphics from all the data that is inside the, the database. The options are generated dynamically based on the information that is parsed in the, and stored in the database. And first, this is an example of, of, the, of the result of a query. The user just has to select what he wants to generate, and the query is translated to a, to a query of the database. We also include the top 100 feature that will give you the top 100 IPs in your flow data, which is really useful to detect computers that are compromising or, compromised or behaving abnormally. We also have the 100 ports. Uh, we have the, what are the, the views that once you are logged in for each of the graphs, you can, it, it will appear this bottom on the, on the bottom, <laughs> that you can click and add that graph to a, to a view. And a view is, and a view is just, a, for example, if you have a network operation center and you have two big screens like this one, you can choose to create a view with all the graphs that are related to one of the network. And in the other screen, you can have all the views that are related to another network. And you can talk to the system administrators of a remote campus of the UPR and say, create your own view. And this is the data that you need to look every day. This is how they look. Uh, this is the administration interface. It's really, really easy to use. You have a list of the networks or device that you have defined and a list of the views. When you want to add a network, you have to give, give it a, a, a label, so, uh, insert the information that you want to use to monitor, to monitor that network, for example, the interface number, the autonomous system number, and once you add the new network, you have the options to add new ports, the network connections, 
and if you want to add the network blocks. Uh, okay. So the plugins. The idea with the plugins is that while you are using the TOA interface, if you find an, e an event in a timeline series, you can click on the on a, point, on a point of time, and it will give you this pop-up window where you can choose a plugin. We have currently two plugins uh, uh, developed. One is the Cube, which is a re-implementation of the spinning cube of potential doom that uh, they were talking about that yesterday. Uh, it is based on WebGL and 3GS. It has some controls that I use to filter the data. And you can find threads like network scan and port scan. This is how it looks. And this, this is web based also. You know. uh, and this is an example of how you can detect a network scan or a port scan. The other visualization that we have created so far is the uh, just an indirect graph. It is created using the InfoBiz toolkit. It also has the controls, and it can be used potentially to detect uh, denial of services attack. So you have. Uh, all the nodes that are in that period of time, how are they connected, and you can easily see that there are some nodes that have many connections, and you can try then to determine if they are under a denial of service attack or if they are a bot or something like that. If you click one of the nodes, you will have a summary of all the IPs that are connected to that, that node. And this is it. Do you have any questions? Uh, actually, in Puerto Rico, that is how that river looks in the summer, and this is how it looks every other season of the year. <laughs> so I, I kind of like what you did with your web-based NetFlow uh, tool. Uh, do you kind of have a roadmap for it? Uh, is it freely available or? It is freely available. It is in GitHub. I don't remember the, the address. You, you can ask me after the presentation. I will give you access. Uh, I just forget to put it there. I also forgot to put my email. <laughs> uh, so the, this is a project that has been developed mainly by our undergrad students. They are graduating, and it is really hard to get undergrad students to finish stuff on time. Let me pass the mic. So. So if you search, uh, search for TOA, T-O-A, you, you can find it. And also, uh, the, if you look for CS Lab, U-P-R-R-P, you can also find it. Uh, if, if you don't find it, then email us, and, and we'll send you the link. So the immediate roadmap will be to probably try to find some funding so we can hire at least one or two full-time programmers that they can keep developing uh, plugins and features that we already have thought about them. Especially many of the visualization that have been presented here in Flogon, try to take them to the web so anybody can monitor their network remotely using their tablets and stuff like that. I'm also interested in uh, uh, the attack activity you're seeing. You know, so, looking at the flow, you had a graph view and you have some other views. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? About the views? About what, sorry? Some of the grab views and the queue views. You, you're using NetFlow to, to detect uh, malicious activity? So in visualization, if you just find a different change of behavior, you can assume that it, it might be an anomaly on the network, or it is probably something that you know will happen on that period of time. 
So our idea is that after you find that on a timeline, you can then use the plugins to scrutinize over the, the NetFlow data and find possible threads. Like for example, how we do in the cube, that we can find, actually the cube is just uh, in the X axis, it is the source address of the IPv4, you know, 32 bit of numbers <laughs> in the X axis. The Y axis will be the destination address, and the Z axis will be the destination port. So when you find a line, in the X axis, it can be a network scan. And if you find a line over the, sorry, the port, the Y axis, Z axis, it will probably be a port scan, stuff like that. It will just appear like that. A real, and a really beautiful animation. <laughs> I guess, are you doing any trending over the weeks or the months of the uh, malicious activity you're seeing? So for example, you, you know, you have the port scans, you, you know, that you see. Are you looking at that over a weekly trend or? No, 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 no. Just, just, well, you can actually, after you are in the plugin, you can choose uh, which flow data you want to monitor. And you can, not in this implementation here, but you can also choose a period of time. In, but right now, how it works is that we, um, we generate graph every five minutes. So if you click in a point of time, you will have a flow of five minutes. Then you can you run the plugin, and it would be just watching under the data of that period of time of five minutes. If you want to go back, you can, you can, let me see how this works. You can come here, change the date and the time, and you can keep just looking at the data, how it animates and stuff like that. And the same goes with the other plugin. And you also mentioned your uh, your students help you, and uh, they, this is like one of their projects. Uh, do you plan to have uh, your next set of students continue to work on this? Well, <laughs> my students are great. I actually found this project to be uh, really important because they, it motivates my undergraduate student to pursue undergraduate research and get interest on networking and cybersecurity and stuff like that. But it's really hard to have a full project just working with undergraduate students, especially when you have, in, in my university, I have many hats. I have to manage grants, I have to teach, I have to do many stuff. And supervise them is really hard. Even though they are great, look at the stuff that they can do. <laughs> on the leader supervision. <laughs> uh, uh, to be able to support a project like this, I really need uh, full-time people working on it. How many students did you have? I'm just... I don't know if you know Dan Garcia. He's a very popular computer science professor. He's like a rock star in the 6 uh, conference. Uh, I, I have the same philosophy as him. Whoever wants to work with me is welcome in my laboratory. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.